it's interesting because especially with some of the main headliners, we are working with one, even two years in advance. So right now, as we speak, there are conversations for headliners in 2026. Um, let's say that the headliners, um, sometimes you are bound to the fact that, that they are touring or not. Uh, and of course, that is important, but I really think that what creates the true character of a, of a head of a, of a lineup as a whole, especially second and third lines, because you are really underlining something in there. We've been uh, witnessing so many times artists that we had in the past, and we knew that they would be huge. And then in a couple of years, they come back as headliners. That has happened with Solange in previous editions. That has happened with Rosalia before. Uh, so we know that they are going to be big. And maybe the first time that they come to the festival, it's like second or third tier. And then when they come back, they're headliners. Um, so that's um, on one hand side. And uh, the other one is, uh, and this is not mine, it's from one of the bookers. They say that... Um, it is really important to have four different things when you are creating a lineup for, for the festival. The first one would be to have uh, someone that you have uh, always wanted to see and you have never seen them. The second one would be someone who's going to become uh, your new favorite artist and you didn't know them before. The third one would be something that challenges you and it could be a weird K-pop act and you've never witnessed K-pop and you are like, okay, what's with the dances? What's with these poses? This is amazing and I don't understand it. Or it could be a heavy doom metal band, so noisy and you are like, wow, what's happening here? But it would be something that challenges you. And the fourth one would be something that you are going to have a lot of fun with. You can be with your friends, you can be on your own, you can be with your new friends and you're having like the time of your life. And I think that uh, at the end of the day, if you've been able to witness one of in each uh, of these four categories, you're going to have a perfect, uh, a perfect day at Primavera Sound. I think that the, the the secret also with the gender balance lineup uh, as well the all the different uh, genres that we have in the festival is that our booking department is very diverse so you have you know people who have been working for primavera since day one so they are really good at knowing the core of uh, of the festival and then we have really young people and we have uh, as many men as uh, women also in the um, let's say the the more senior part of uh, of the booking department and the most junior so kind of everyone has their little uh, parts of uh, of knowledge and passion and then this works together uh they have constant meetings and someone comes and they say hey i've heard about silica gel and someone says okay so what's silica gel and then they propose that uh, or someone else comes and say hey from japan we have atarashi gako okay what's atarashi gako so then even though uh not everyone has the same expertise all the the suggestions are uh, run through the team and then they say, okay, yeah, maybe at Rashi Gako, yes, and maybe someone else, we don't see it as fit. But it's, I think, because everyone is kind of a geek in our own little parcels here. Uh, so so we like to, to share that. And of course, there are lots of trips to, to Japan, to Korea, uh, to to meet new, new acts. We do have very good relationships with the biggest agencies. So of course, then they also run suggestions through, through us. So at this point, now that we have been programming K-pop for maybe four years now, uh, wow. the, um, the 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 network is already uh, running and and working. Uh, I I'm not lying to you. We've had so many people in the office that when Liberato was announced, and they were like, yes. Finally, 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 Liberato has lots of fans, including myself. Italy is our th is our third country uh, in in importance of of the audience. It is huge for for us, and we do know how loyal Italian uh, audience is, and it is really consistent. Uh, we haven't really noticed um, that if we have an Italian artist, more Italian people come. 
which happens very clearly, for example, with France. Any year that we do have a French headliner, people from France will come. Doesn't matter who we have in the in the bill, Italian audience come. So, and this is amazing because it's so consistent. Um, it will be interesting to attend a Liberato concert and to see um, if the audience is mostly Italian. But I would say that uh, they have made a name for from themselves with all the mysteries surrounding them. So I don't think that even if they uh, sing so much in, Ita in Napolitan, I think it is so local, you know? Um, it's just things that can go from very local to global. Um, you do, I don't think that you have to be um, Italian to to understand the the feeling. Uh, I don't know. I think that the mystery surrounding Liberato is one of the the best points. And I'm really curious, like when you attend one of the K-pop uh, shows and you try to detect, okay, so who is attending this show? Uh, I would say that, of course, uh, many, many Italian people will be there. But I don't think that uh, he caters only to to Italian audience. And definitely, as I said, we don't see a spike of um, in the Italian audience if we program Italian artists. Uh, we know that Italian people come to Primavera. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and that's for a fact. And that really makes us very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> 